A woman who doesn't make much money shouldn't make her husband do the chores. You really are hopeless. My mother-in-law berates me as she pleases, but at last she realizes the situation in my household. Wait, are you by any chance paying the mortgage for this house? How much are you making? My name is Don. I'm a 35-year-old project manager. I've been married to Jonathan for three years now. We occasionally argued and went through ups and downs, but now we are leading a relatively smooth marriage. I suppose we would continue this way, working hard on our careers and staying together for the rest of our lives. But there is one obstacle that greatly shakes my feelings. My mother-in-law. I've disliked Kim from the moment I met her. It's because she has been bullying me from the start. So, you are Jonathan's fiancé, huh? I will toughen you up, so brace yourself. She grinned with an audacious smile. Hearing such comments from someone I had just met obviously made me feel uneasy. When I first visited my in-laws after getting married, she, as expected, bossed me around. You are so slow. When will the food be ready? I don't know where the things are in your kitchen, so it would take longer. Jeez, are you talking back to me? You impudent daughter-in-law. I will straighten out that rotten character of yours. Now get to work. She's been incessantly bullying me in this manner. I stopped wanting to visit my in-laws a long ago. But Jonathan insists that I at least attend family gatherings. I reluctantly join them. But I'm always made to help with the preparation. During those times, she never failed to belittle me. You really are useless. Nothing will ever get done. You have no merits at all. Why did Jonathan fall for someone like you? I don't mind if you guys end up divorced anytime. During such moments, when we are alone, she relentlessly pains me. I'm normally mentally exhausted at the preparation stage. Then, during the banquet, I have to serve drinks to relatives, clear dishes, and refill drinks. There is no time for me to take a breath. This is why I generally detest family gatherings. Moreover, Jonathan never pays attention and checks on me. He enjoys eating and drinking as he pleases, and often ends up falling asleep, so he doesn't even notice what I'm enduring. The last time we were at the gathering, I was treated so badly that I vented to him after we got home. I can't take it anymore. I will never go to your family gatherings. He looked stern and got angry. What are you saying? You're my wife. Attending these things is your obligation, you know. Are you serious? If you are really like that, divorce may be the only option. What? Divorce? Don't you dare mention it so lightly. Of course I don't. You have no clue how much I'm suffering from your mother's bullying. You never pay any attention. I do know what goes on. Look who's talking. If so, you must have seen her picking on me. You don't pay attention to your surroundings. Instead, you just focus on food and then sleep. He fell silent, as if I had struck a cold. We often clash over family matters like this. After that, he finally gave in and never asked me to join the gatherings anymore. I've been able to avoid seeing Kim since the beginning of the year, which has brought me immense relief. However, it was just a calm before the storm. Not having to go to my in-law's house anymore made me feel so much lighter, and I was able to focus on my work even more than before. I started working more over time without any worries, and my performance improved steadily. As a result, I received a promotion. I also took on a side job during my free time, 
and increased my income to a level I never imagined. It made me feel emotionally at ease. With substantial savings, I felt capable of handling any potential troubles. And above all, I could finally start working toward my dream of owning a home. Then, amidst all this, I received a call from a property agent. I had been visiting them and discussing various options for a while. So they informed me about new properties whenever they became available. The one recommended turned out to be excellent. It almost perfectly matched the criteria I had in mind, and the location was ideal. I thought I might as well purchase the ready made house without needing to involve a construction company. After discussing it with Jonathan, we made the decision to put our offer. Soon after, we moved into our new home. The rooms were spacious, and since it was brand new, everything was pristine. Both the exterior and interior were stylish, and just looking at it filled me with excitement. When I started unpacking, I realized that the furniture and appliances went exactly as I had imagined. Confirming that my choice was spot on. Once we began our life in the new house, it was incredibly comfortable and truly fantastic. Jonathan was satisfied too. And both of us were so cheerful that our lively conversations never ceased. Our marriage seems to improve significantly, and I felt wonderful every day. I truly believe that choosing that house was the right decision. Aside from that, buying a new home meant that we had to invite each other's family over at least once. While Jonathan and I were finally building a good relationship, I couldn't refuse Kim's visit. So my parents in law came over promptly. Wow, this is such a fantastic home! You've worked hard, Jonathan! Living in such a splendid house is amazing! Kim was extremely excited. However, it felt like Jonathan was giving off the impression that he had bought the house, which bothered me a little. Then my father in law David stepped in. Don works as well, so it's not just his effort. They are both working, so they contributed equally to this house. I was delighted that he acknowledged my effort. Kim was rolling her eyes after being corrected by him. Surprisingly, Jonathan also seemed discontented, which disturbed my feelings. I was the one who bought the house in my name. In reality, I had a higher income than him. It seemed he had never told his parents about it. He was surprisingly proud, so that was a possibility. It didn't really matter to me if Kim misunderstood the situation, as I assumed I wouldn't be dealing with her so often. I shifted my focus and entertained my in laws. They seemed very satisfied when they left. That was supposed to be the end of it. From then on, I was planning to refuse if Kim wanted to come over. And sure enough, she tried soon after. Moreover, she was planning to come along. Since Jonathan was ready to accept it without question, I had to step in. Hey, honey, have you forgotten our agreement? I've said that I will only have minimal contact with your mother. I was lenient when she visited for the first time, but from now on, she needs to get my permission. Besides, I will never allow her to come alone. If I do, she will want to visit every day. I'm sure she would like to spend some time in the new home with us. If I allow her to come along, it's going to be a hassle for me. If Davy's not with her, she will create trouble. Why would she cause trouble? What do you think of my mother? Anyway, don't invite her when I'm around. I didn't budge an inch. Knowing him, I figured he would try to break the previous agreement and invite her over. He reluctantly accepted my demand and promised not to do it. I thought it might have strained our relationship, 
But surprisingly, he continued to treat me normally afterward. Then one day, we received news that David had fallen seriously ill and was hospitalized. We rushed there and saw David lying on the bed, hooked on a machine. Kim explained the situation in distress. He suddenly collapsed at home. I called an ambulance, and luckily, they managed to treat him just in time. If it had been a bit later, who knows what would have happened to him? We were both shaken after hearing that. It had been a close call. We were relieved that he had survived. A little while later, he finally woke up. Surprisingly, he seems to be better than I expected and showed a healthy complexion. I'm sorry for causing everyone so much worry. How are you feeling, David? Dad, don't push yourself hard, you know. Yeah, you were right. I may have been too hard on myself without taking a break until now. It looks like I will be here for a while, so I will take this opportunity to take it easy. He was an incredibly diligent person who often strained himself. Even as he got older, he continued like that, so his body must have finally reached its limit. After that, I visited him in the hospital as often as I could. Since I went after work, I didn't bump into Kim, and I had plenty of opportunities to talk with him. During that time, something unexpected happened. I was away on a business trip for five days. When I returned, I heard Kim's voice inside the house. I was annoyed by her unpermitted presence as I headed to the living room. There, she was lying on the sofa, looking cozy as if it were her own home. Oh, you're back. Jonathan looked at me as I entered the room. Hey, what's going on? I wasn't expecting to see you here, Kim. I glanced briefly at her. She turned to look at me and said, Well, I live here now, you know. What do you mean? You are such a dimwit. I moved in for the time being. We decided to live together until David came back. You are kidding, right? I felt dizzy and nearly fainted. Jonathan had taken advantage of my absence to bring her belongings into our home. Somehow, one of the rooms had become filled with her things. I don't recall ever agreeing to live together. When I insisted, she glared at me. I didn't ask for your permission. I'm in a difficult situation without David around, and I need help. Right. That's why she turned to me. Honey. Try to be a bit more mature. It's not about agreeing or disagreeing. We are a family, and we should support each other. He nodded in self-satisfaction after making those seemingly reasonable comments. Kim proudly exclaimed, That's my son. Then, if I want to invite my parents to live with us, that should be okay, right? What? Well, according to your logic, it should be. If they want to live together and need help as a family, we should support each other, right? So it should be fine, shouldn't it? No, that's not the same. How is it not the same? Don't argue with him, you wicked woman! Kim shouted, coming to his defense as he struggled to find words. I'm living here now, so there's no space for your parents to come. If you understand, start doing the housework. You've been playing around all this time, so you better work diligently from now on. Um, I've been working all this time. It's probably not a significant job anyway. Besides, your business trip seems suspicious. You might have just taken a trip with your lover for all I know. What the heck are you talking about? My, my. It's suspicious how you are flustering. Jonathan, if she was really having an affair, we should demand alimony and get rid of her. Yeah, agree. 
Unbelievable! How much more could they belittle me? On top of it all, Jonathan had let her come to our house without asking me and forcibly initiated cohabitation. My distrust toward him intensified rapidly. From then on, Kim gleefully resumed her previous mistreatment toward me. It was emotionally draining and challenging. I was also becoming busier at work. So there was times when I couldn't manage housework even if she scolded me. As a habit from before, I asked Jonathan to take on some tasks. Upon seeing that, Kim's face turned red with anger. What are you trying to do? Making him help with the housework? I can't handle it all by myself. He has helped me before when I was busy. You don't even earn good money, yet yet you make him do housework. You really are useless, you know. He deserves a better wife than you. She continued to criticize me as she pleased. I couldn't understand why she needed to go to such length. All right then, should we get a divorce? What? Jonathan panicked at my statement. Hold on, honey. Don't bring it up so casually. This might be a good opportunity, Jonathan. Rather than being with a woman like her, you should find someone better. But mom, that's not possible. Why not? Well, he hesitated, choosing not to reveal the truth, possibly due to his pride. I felt there was no need to wait for his answer, so I began packing my things. I can't relax here anyway, so I will return to my family for now. Are you serious? No problem, Jonathan. With the intruder gone, we can live carefree now. Mom, be quiet. Jonathan? Hum, what about the mortgage payments and stuff? I won't pay them unless you kick her out. If she continues to stay here, I will put the house up for sale. Wait, hold on. That's going to be a problem. Hey, Don, what nonsense are you blabbering about? This house belongs to Jonathan, right? While she leaned to peer at his face, she finally seemed to realize the situation. It was because he appeared uncomfortable and turned his face away. Wait, you're the one paying the mortgage by any chance? I nodded in response. How much do you make? Well, I earn around $4,000 net monthly. Including investments and a side job, it's even higher. His take-home salary is roughly around $2,000. Oh my god! You have a much higher income! That's right. She finally learned the truth and was devastated. Dawn, I was wrong. I apologize, so please reconsider. You say that now, but my decision is final. I don't want to stay with Jonathan and you any longer. Divorce is definite. Oh god, honey! Dawn! They tried to stop me, but I left the house without paying them any mind. Afterward, I demanded a divorce through a lawyer. Jonathan resisted it until the end, but when I mentioned going to court, he quickly relented. He seems to be quite frightened of the idea of a trial. Since the house was in my name, I asked them to leave. I explained the situation to David and apologized for the divorce. He, in turn, apologized for the trouble his son and wife had caused, calling them foolish. He also decided to divorce Kim. He had grown tired of her unruly behavior and wanted nothing more to do with her. My ousted ex-mother-in-law ended up moving in with Jonathan, becoming a sort of parasite. However, without an affluent lifestyle they were used to, they become frustrated and started quarreling daily. On the other hand, I invited my parents to live with me in the house. They seem very comfortable in our new home, and I find it easier to focus on my work now. I'm leading a fulfilling life at last. 
I'm putting romance and marriage aside, and will focus on living a harmonious life while dedicating myself to my job. <laughs>